She's the cold-blooded killer just sentenced to life without the possibility of parole for shooting her mother to death. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another video on our channel, Immortal News. Today we'll be presenting a list of famous celebrities who have passed away, with announcements of their passing made in the last 24 hours. As always, we have special tributes in our Today's Top Headline section. Before we proceed we kindly ask for your support by giving this video a thumbs up. Let's begin. Thank you. Number 9. Gavin Creel, an acclaimed Broadway actor and Tony Award winner, was known for his captivating performances and tireless advocacy for social justice. Renowned for his roles in Hello, Dolly, for which he won the Tony Award for Best Featured Actor in a Musical in 2017, thoroughly modern Millie and Into the Woods, Creel's talent and vibrant stage presence left an everlasting mark on the theater world. His voice and performances filled with energy and emotion earned him a devoted following on both Broadway and the West End. Gavin James Creel was born on April 18, 1976 in Finlay, Ohio. From a young age, Creel showed a passion for performing and pursued his dreams by studying musical theater at the University of Michigan, where he earned a Bachelor of Fine Arts in 1998. His breakout role came in 2002, starring as Jimmy Smith in Thoroughly Modern Millie, which earned him his first Tony nomination. Beyond his onstage career, Creel was a passionate advocate for LGBT rights. He co-founded Broadway Impact, a nonprofit that played a key role in advocating for marriage equality. His commitment to using his platform for social change was a testament to his belief in the power of community and activism. In addition to his work on Broadway, Creel won the Olivier Award for Best Actor in a Musical for his performance in the West End production of The Book of Mormon. He also appeared in films such as Eloise at the Plaza and the American Horror Stories miniseries. Gavin Creel passed away at the age of 48 after battling a rare and aggressive form of cancer. He is survived by his family and his partner, Alex Temple Ward. His legacy of incredible performances and heartfelt advocacy will continue to inspire many. Tributes to Gavin Creel. Number 8. Dikembe Mutombo, one of the greatest defenders in NBA history and a passionate humanitarian, left an everlasting mark on the basketball world and beyond. Renowned for his dominance on the court, Mutombo was an eight-time NBA All-Star, a three-time All-NBA selection, and a four-time NBA Defensive Player of the Year. His distinctive shot-blocking skills, highlighted by his iconic finger wag, made him a legendary figure in the sport. Mutombo was inducted into the Basketball Hall of Fame in 2015, solidifying his legacy as one of the best defensive players to ever grace the game. Dikembe Mutombo was born on November 1, 1966 in Kinshasa, Democratic Republic of the Congo. After moving to the United States to attend Georgetown University on an academic scholarship, he excelled under legendary coach John Thompson, quickly becoming one of the top centers in college basketball. His towering presence and defensive prowess led him to be selected fourth overall in the 1991 NBA Draft by the Denver Nuggets. Over an illustrious 18-season career, he played for several teams, including Denver, Atlanta, Houston, and Philadelphia, consistently leading the league in rebounds and blocks. Beyond his achievements on the court, Mutombo was a tireless advocate for humanitarian causes, particularly in Africa. In 1997, he established the Dekembe Mutombo Foundation to improve healthcare, education, and quality of life for people in his native Congo. He built hospitals, served on numerous charitable boards, and used his platform to make a lasting impact on communities in need. His efforts earned him the role of the NBA's first global ambassador, a title he cherished as he continued his work around the world. Mutombo passed away at the age of 58, surrounded by family. His legacy as a towering figure in both basketball and philanthropy will inspire generations to come. Tributes to Dikembe Mutombo.
Number 7. Archie Karras, renowned for the most extraordinary winning streak in gambling history, left an everlasting mark on the world of high-stakes gaming. Born in Argyros Karaborniotis on November 1, 1950 in Antipata, Cephalonia, Greece, Karras rose from poverty to become a legendary gambler, poker player, and pool shark. He is best known for The Run, where in December 1992, with just $50 to his name, he turned a $10,000 loan into more than $40 million by 1995, only to lose it all within the same year. His story became the stuff of legend in Las Vegas and beyond, solidifying his status as a gambling icon. Karras began his journey in the United States after running away from home at age 15. After working as a waiter, he honed his skills as a pool player in Los Angeles, eventually transitioning into poker. His gambling career was marked by wild swings, where he would frequently go from being broke to having millions, only to lose it all again. It was in Las Vegas, however, where Karras made his name. After arriving with nothing, he quickly built a staggering fortune by taking on the world's best poker players and rolling the dice at craps tables, ultimately amassing over $40 million. During the run, Karras defeated legendary players like Stu Ungar and Chip Reese, challenging the very best in poker, while also dominating the casino tables. However, his disregard for money and fearless betting led to the eventual loss of his entire fortune within a few weeks in 1995. Despite his notorious gambling streak, Karras was admired for his audacity and skill. His story was featured in multiple documentaries and books, including Cigar Aficionado and The Man with the $100,000 Breasts. Even after losing his fortune, Karras had several mini-streaks but never recaptured the same level of success. Archie Karras passed away at the age of 73. His remarkable journey from rags to riches and back again continues to fascinate and inspire those intrigued by the high-stakes world of gambling. Tributes to Archie Karras Number 6. Park Ji-ya, a distinguished South Korean actress, renowned for her captivating performances in Kim Ki-duk's films, left a lasting legacy in the world of cinema. Born on February 25, 1972 in Daegu, South Korea, Park rose to prominence through her powerful roles in films such as Breath, where her portrayal of Yeon earned her acclaim from critics, including being described as terrific by Variety. Throughout her career, Park made recurring appearances in five of Kim ki works, solidifying her place in the global film industry. After initially training as a figure skater in her youth, Park shifted her focus to acting, a field where she would make a significant mark. Her versatility as an actress allowed her to take on a wide range of roles, from her debut in Jugin and Iyagi in 1998 to later acclaimed performances in films like Three Iron and Spring, Summer, Fall, Winter, and Spring. She was particularly praised for her ability to convey deep emotional layers, making her a standout in the South Korean film industry. In addition to her film career, Park made notable appearances in television dramas, including The Glory on Netflix, The Doctors, and Suspicious Partner. Her contributions to both cinema and television were marked by her dedication to her craft and her ability to connect deeply with audiences across different genres. Despite her professional achievements, Park was a devoted mother, raising her daughter as a single parent after her divorce. Her strength and resilience in balancing her career and personal life inspired many. Park Jia passed away at the age of 52 due to an ischemic stroke. Her profound impact on the entertainment industry and her unforgettable performances will continue to resonate with fans and future generations. Tributes to Park Jia
Number 5. Nathalia Urban, a fearless Brazilian journalist and human rights activist, was a powerful voice in the fight for justice, equity, and democracy. Best known for her incisive reporting on Latin American politics, Natalia was a key figure in the media, consistently speaking out against political oppression, environmental destruction, and social inequality. As a presenter on Brazil 247, Opera Mundi, and Revista Forum, she contributed to raising awareness of pressing issues in Brazil and around the world. Her journalistic work earned her respect across various platforms, including Brazil Wire and Jacobin, where she regularly addressed the rise of authoritarianism and fascism in Brazil. Born on December 25, 1987 in Santos, São Paulo, Natalia Urban grew up in João Pessoa, Paraíba. Raised by a single mother, Natalia pursued her passion for social justice through studies in anthropology, social sciences and journalism at the Federal University of Paraíba, UC São Paulo, and the Catholic University of Santos. Her early focus on women's rights and social movements informed her journalistic endeavors and her commitment to amplifying marginalized voices. In 2014, Natalia relocated to Scotland, where she co-founded the Resist Brazil Scotland, an organization dedicated to improving conditions in her home country and advocating for the rights of Latin Americans in Scotland. Natalia's activism was rooted in her own experiences as a migrant, driving her to become a founding trustee and later a board member of the Migrant Women Press an initiative that provided training and opportunities for migrant women in journalism. Natalia's life was tragically cut short at the age of 36. After suffering irreparable brain damage, her life support was turned off and her organs were donated, continuing her legacy of helping others. Her passing has prompted calls for investigation, including from Brazilian President Lula da Silva. Natalia's tireless dedication to justice, equality, and human rights will be remembered by all who were touched by her work and activism. Tributes to Natalia Urban. Number 4. Mario LeBlanc, better known by his stage name Feo, was an acclaimed Acadian musician and poet who left an everlasting mark on the world of folk and urban poetry. Born in 1977 in Dieppe, New Brunswick, Feo's unique musical style, sung in a local dialect blending French and English, resonated deeply with Acadian culture. His music, a mixture of folk, rock, and poetic expression, became a defining voice of southeastern New Brunswick. Fayo began his artistic journey at the young age of 13, writing songs that would later lead him to perform with the Acadian band Reve. In 1999, he ventured into the world of poetry with the publication of Birthmarks, marking the start of his career as both a musician and a poet. His talent quickly earned recognition. In 2000, he won the Singer-Songwriter of the Year Award at the Gala de la Chanson de Caraque for his album, Bean Fever. This accolade was followed by the prestigious Newcomer of the Year, Award. Feo continued to evolve as an artist, recording multiple albums over the years. His second album, Acute Accent, released in 2006, further solidified his place in the Acadian music scene. His collaboration with Bosnian singer Lepa Brena on the 2011 album Enchanted Circle showcased his versatility and international appeal. Feo's artistic impact extended beyond music. His performances and recordings touched hearts and his dedication to his Acadian roots influenced a new generation of artists. His music, deeply tied to Acadian identity and culture, remains a cherished part of the community's heritage. Mario LeBlanc passed away on September 30, 2024, at the age of 47. His contributions to music and poetry will continue to inspire many, keeping his legacy alive in the hearts of fans and the broader Acadian community. Tributes to Mario LeBlanc. Number 3. Robert Amar, a visionary French physicist and former director general of CERN, was renowned for his groundbreaking contributions to the fields of plasma physics, nuclear fusion, and particle physics. 
As Director General of CERN from 2004 to 2008, AMAR oversaw the construction and early stages of the Large Hadron Collider, one of the most significant scientific projects in history. His work in fusion energy research and his leadership in advancing fundamental research programs left an everlasting mark on global scientific progress. Born in 1936 in France, Robert Amar studied at the prestigious École Polytechnique before embarking on a distinguished career that began with the Commissariat à l'énergie atomique in 1959. His expertise in plasma physics led him to head the Torre Supra project, which aimed to advance controlled thermonuclear fusion. By the 1990s, Amar was serving as director of the Direction des Sciences de la Matière at the CEA, guiding critical experimental and theoretical research. Amar's influence extended beyond national borders, as he played key roles in international scientific collaborations, including his tenure as director of the ITER project, the world's foremost nuclear fusion research effort. He was instrumental in recommending the LHC for approval in 1996, and chaired numerous international committees that shaped the future of scientific research. His achievements were recognized with multiple honors, including the International Global Energy Prize in 2006, and the National Order of the Legion of Honor in 2011. Amar remained a respected figure in the scientific community, contributing to the advancement of knowledge until his passing. Robert Amar died at the age of 88. His legacy as a leader in both nuclear fusion and particle physics will continue to inspire future generations of scientists. Tributes to Robert Amar. Number 2. Stoika Milanova, the celebrated Bulgarian violinist, was renowned for her extraordinary technical skill and expressive performances that captivated audiences worldwide. Winner of the prestigious Karl Flesch International Violin Competition in 1970, and recipient of the Grand Prix du Disque for her recordings of Prokofiev's violin concertos, Milanova's career was a testament to her immense talent and dedication to classical music. Her performances with major orchestras and collaborations with pianists like Radu Lupu and Malcolm Frager solidified her place among the elite violinists of her time. Born on August 5, 1945, in Plovdiv, Bulgaria, Stoika Milanova was taught by her father, a distinguished violinist and educator, using a method he developed specifically for her. She later studied under the legendary David Oystrak at the State Tchaikovsky Conservatory in Moscow. Milanova's international breakthrough came in 1967 when she placed second in the Queen Elizabeth competition, a feat that further elevated her status as a world-class violinist. Throughout the 1970s and early 1980s, Milanova was a highly sought-after soloist, performing with prominent orchestras across Europe, Japan, the United States, and Australia. Her prom's debut in 1971 with the BBC Symphony Orchestra, performing Mendelssohn's Violin Concerto, remains a highlight of her illustrious career. She was also a dedicated educator, holding the chair of violin at the State Academy of Music in Sofia and teaching at the State Conservatory of Venezuela from 2005 to 2010. In addition to her performing career, Milanova was deeply committed to passing on her father's violin teaching method to future generations, both in Bulgaria and abroad. Her influence as a teacher and performer will continue to resonate through her students and recordings. Stoika Milanova passed away at the age of 79. Her legacy as a master violinist and educator will endure, leaving an everlasting mark on the world of classical music. Tributes to Stoika Milanova. What's trending on the internet? News 1. 
Hollywood is mourning the loss of legendary singer-songwriter and actor Chris Christopherson, who passed away at the age of 88 on Sunday, September 29, 2024. His family shared the news on Instagram, expressing gratitude for the years of love and support from fans. We're all so blessed for our time with him. When you see a rainbow, know he's smiling down at us all, the statement read. Chris, a Golden Globe winner and three-time Grammy recipient, was a beloved figure in the music and film industries, with a career spanning over six decades. He's best known for his role in A Star Is Born, 1976, alongside Barbara Streisand, who paid tribute to him on Instagram, calling him special and charming. She added, it was a joy seeing him receive the recognition and love he so richly deserved. Country music icon Dolly Parton, a longtime collaborator and friend, expressed her sadness saying, what a great writer, actor, and friend. I will always love you, Chris. Leanne Rimes described him as an epic human with the biggest heart, while Travis Tritt shared memories from their time together on the set of Outlaw Justice in 1998. Reba McIntyre reflected on his kind spirit, calling him a gentleman, a lover of words, and one of my favorite people. News 2. Tributes are pouring in for 27-year-old Savannah Calvo, a beloved former model who tragically passed away on Wednesday night at Young Henry's Brewery in Enmore, Sydney. Savannah's sudden death has sent shockwaves through her close-knit community, where she was cherished as a kind and radiant soul. Savannah was found at the brewery at approximately 11.30 p.m., and while investigations are ongoing, authorities have stated that her death is not being treated as suspicious. In honor of her memory, locals have been leaving heartfelt graffiti around Enmore, with messages like, Savannah, we love you, appearing near the brewery. Family friend Adam St. John Foti, who described Savannah as having faced trying times in recent months, launched a GoFundMe campaign to support her family and cover funeral expenses. Savannah is being remembered as a cherished daughter, sister, and friend, with loved ones expressing their deep grief. She brought so much love and light into our lives, shared one tribute. The news of Savannah's passing has also reached Newtown's Cooper's Hotel, where a heartfelt social media post expressed the community's sorrow over her loss. Her passing is described as a massive loss to all who knew her. News 3. Carly Gregg, a 15-year-old from Mississippi, has been sentenced to life in prison following a tragic incident involving her family. Convicted of the murder of her mother, a high school teacher, and the attempted murder of her stepfather, the case has sparked significant legal and ethical discussions. The incident highlighted serious concerns regarding adolescent mental health, as the defense presented evidence of Carly's struggles with mental health issues, including psychosis. Despite this, the jury reached a verdict after brief deliberation, influenced by the gravity of the actions and the evidence presented. This case has raised important questions about the intersection of mental health and criminal responsibility, especially in juveniles. The community and advocates are now calling for enhanced mental health support for young people and a re-evaluation of how the legal system addresses juvenile offenders. As this case concludes, it serves as a poignant reminder of the need for comprehensive approaches to mental health within our communities, particularly for our younger population. News 4. Marlene Barrett, known for her role on Chicago Med, is celebrating joyful survival mode after completing 30 rounds of chemotherapy and achieving complete remission from uterine and ovarian cancer. Diagnosed in July 2022, Barrett underwent extensive treatment, including surgery and paracentesis, while continuing to work on the show. Despite facing immense pain and exhaustion, she found strength in her work and the support of her colleagues. Being on set was life-giving, Barrett shared, adding that her Chicago Med family helped create a system of care around her. Now in remission, Barrett is focused on self-care, attending regular counseling, swimming, and spending quality time with her family. Reflecting on her journey, Barrett says she is embracing life more fully and sees her recovery as an opportunity to help others. She encourages people to prioritize mental health, reminding them, you're never, ever alone. Barrett's openness about her cancer battle has inspired many, and she hopes her story can continue to offer support and hope to others facing similar challenges. Number 1. Jacques Reda, a celebrated French poet, jazz critic and flaneur, 
made his mark on French literature and the world of jazz with his eloquent writings and profound insights. Known for his captivating urban explorations and deep engagement with music, Rida was awarded the prestigious Prix Valéry Larbeau in 1983. His literary career reached new heights when he served as the chief editor of the Nouvelle Revue Française from 1987 to 1996, a period that cemented his influence on contemporary French literature. Born on January 24, 1929, in Lunéville, France, Reda's career as a poet began in the 1960s with the publication of Amen in 1968. Over the following decades, he crafted a diverse body of work, including Les Rines de Paris and L'Improviste, Un Lecteur du Jazz, a reflection of his love for Paris and jazz. His poetry often depicted the city's streets and rhythms with a blend of lyrical beauty and philosophical reflection. His book, Les Ruines de Paris, has been widely acclaimed, and its English translation, The Ruins of Paris, brought his work to an international audience. In addition to poetry, Reda's writings on jazz further expanded his creative scope. His intimate connection with the genre led him to become a key voice in jazz criticism in France, influencing both literary and musical circles. Beyond his literary contributions, Reda was deeply committed to his role as a cultural guide preserving the essence of both urban and musical landscapes for future generations. His works continue to inspire readers with their contemplative and nuanced explorations of life. Jacques Reda passed away at the age of 95, leaving behind a legacy that will resonate in both literary and musical communities for years to come. Tributes to Jacques Reda. Chris Christopherson, the iconic star of Blade and A Star is Born, as well as the writer of timeless songs like Me and Bobby McGee and Help Me Make It Through the Night, 